So the benefits of international study and life on campus as an international student. Uh, so there's there's a lot to a lot of decision a lot to thinking about going abroad to study. Also uh, contemplating: Do I stay and attend my attend a university at home, or do I attend a university uh, or a college at in another country? And so that's a, there's a lot of decisions to that. Uh, what I'm going to basically talk about, my portion of it, is talking about kind of those benefits. The benefits about going abroad and how, uh, how it can be valuable towards you in getting a job or uh, valuable just in life altogether. So, and my, my uh, uh, sorry, I forget to introduce myself. I'm uh, Aaron Wilbarger uh, from Oklahoma City University in the United States. Uh, so um, I'll talk, talk a little bit more about that. But uh, my, my topic's fairly short, but hopefully impactful. Uh, and we'll give you guys a little bit of understanding and hopefully some confidence uh, in thinking about going abroad. This works. Okay. So where you fit in towards international education. Uh, you as a student, it, it's extremely important. Um, it's definitely, and I, I'm going to speak mostly about the United States, um, but within the United States, international students are very valuable. Uh, they mean a lot to the community. They mean a lot to the university. Uh, they bring uh, different, different ideas and different philosophies to the university. Um, that some American students may not be able to bring. And so your ability, and when you're thinking about going abroad, your ability of going abroad and bringing those ideas and those philosophies and your heritage, and your culture, that's, that's important. A word that's kind of used quite a bit within the United States, at least, um, to talk about someone that uh, has this capability of going abroad, they call it global competent or global competency. Uh, and competent basically is just a word uh, that says that you, you understand or you know how it works or how it is. Uh, you you kind of um, are able to uh, make your way through uh, something by, by being competent. And so when we're talking about someone that's globally competent, uh, you're going to have access to worldwide education. Now, there's going to be there's going to be universities within your country that are very, very good. Um, and, and there's there's pretty much anywhere you go. There are some really good universities. Uh, one thing I'm a little biased to the United States. Uh, the United States has uh, some of the best universities in the world. And, and so we, we want to offer that to you. Uh, and so even though you may be able to do uh, your studies in your home country, sometimes there's differences in the way things are being taught uh, and, and just the power of having um, going over abroad that's that those are all good benefits. So you're gonna have this access to worldwide education. Um, when you tend to go abroad, you have this, what we call open-mindedness. So you have a good idea on new ideas, on new cultures. These are all things you're gonna experience. You're, uh, you're gonna be able to interact with, uh, here in the United States, you'll be able to interact with Americans uh, and these American students, typically, definitely on our campus, uh, love to hear and love to talk with international students and love to understand the different heritage, uh, the foods, the ideas that you have. So, uh, and you'll, when you go abroad, you're going to be, you're going to have that, you'll have that idea. You're going to be aware of being able to share and showcase your, your heritage. You'll have this ability to collaborate cross cultures. Like I was saying, you'll, you'll have an understanding of uh, where you, when you went to, let's say, America, 
or Canada or UK or Australia or wherever you want to go to, uh, you'll understand that culture and you'll be able to bring that culture back to your home country. Uh, you also become a kind of a risk taker. It, it's, it's a big decision to go abroad, to just basically tell your friends, tell your family um, that you are leaving the country to go to another, another country to get your education. So that, that's a big risk. Uh, you'll learn new skills. Uh, and what I mean mostly, you'll learn abilities on education. So the education system in the US is a little bit different than the education system we'll say in maybe South America or Central America, or even in Canada, the education, the way it's being taught, the philosophies, the, uh, the structure, uh, the different types of lab works, all those are kind of new ideas. And then uh, communicate ideas with diverse people. You're gonna have a lot of interactions with a lot of different types of cultures and people um, and, and the way different society rankings of people, all these things you're gonna have these interactions with. And so that all is one big component of global competency. All right, um, when you go abroad, when you, when you go to an actual university, you're gonna have this student-student connection. And I think this is one of probably the biggest interaction when you go abroad that you'll have. Obviously, you're gonna be sitting in a classroom with a bunch of people. Um, and eventually, you know, you'll probably start to meet them and you'll start to hang out with them and you'll hopefully become friends with them. And so these student-student interactions and these connections that you have is a, it, it's something that you would not have if you did not go abroad. So uh, you will have these, and I'll just kind of go through this, you will have interactions with not only uh, the country of where you're at, so let's say you come to the United States, you will have this interaction with Americans, uh, but you'll also have interactions probably with other countries or people within your own country. Uh, many universities have somewhere uh, anywhere uh, between like a 2% or even a 10% international population on campus. So there's a lot of interactions and a lot of abilities uh, for you to, like I say, showcase your culture, uh, your heritage, uh, interact with uh, people that you would have never have been able to interact with if you stayed within your home country. And so what the United States, you know, as, as you may know, United States is mixed with tons of culture, people from all over the world. Uh, people bring their heritage to the U.S. Uh, and they bring that to, their, to the campus. So you'll be able to have these interactions. And, and that's the showcase. You're able to showcase. Most universities, very similar to my university, we allow students to showcase their heritage. Uh, we do, uh, and, and a lot of universities will do this too, but maybe through food or through a um, uh, cultural experience, if it's, a, if it's a specific holiday within your, within your home country, you can showcase that holiday or, uh, at your university. And then the last thing, uh, and probably the most important, is you'll have what we call everlasting friendship and bond. So you will you'll probably, especially with social media, you can interact even if you go home with the friends that you met. Um, I, I've been doing this for quite a while. I've seen uh, students that have graduated five or 10 years ago uh, and that now have very successful jobs or careers and they've been able to help out some of their friends that they had within their classroom. Uh, even though they may not be in the same country or they were in the same country, but the friends that you make uh, is, is incredible. I've had several American students that um, have developed companies, uh, have developed a company or that uh, are part of the, the hiring operations of that company. And they've become friends with internationals and they've hired international students that they become friends with because they, you know, of the friendship and their abilities of doing what needs to be done. 
So, so I just leave it with you on who will you meet and become friends with? You never know who you'll meet, but if you never go abroad, you, you may not have these interactions. So the kind of one of the last things here um, is we're talking about your degree, the value of a degree uh, from overseas. Uh, and these percentages are mostly taken from the United States, um, but they can be applied towards other countries, possibly like Canada or the, in the UK, maybe in Australia or some other European country. But these are mostly about statistics for the United States. But they, they do bring, uh, or they, they show how going abroad is important and, and getting that degree and the importance of getting a degree, uh, we'll say in another country, how that's important. So kind of go through these. So 25% uh, higher starting salary when study abroad. So this is talking about a degree from overseas typically will get you a 25% higher salary than the person that did not go abroad. So when you get your degree uh, and you go back to your home country, uh, jobs are, are you're, you're valuable uh, because you have that degree from overseas. And then 97% of graduates who studied abroad found jobs. So that's, that's huge. Uh, in today's demanding market, uh, sometimes it's very difficult to even get a job, even with a degree. And so when you, when you, we, you can say 97%, that's, that's, a, that's a major uh, percentage to show that how powerful a degree from overseas is. And then with, uh, this is taken, this next one, within 10 years, 50% workers will have some global experience. And this was taken uh, from many companies uh, within the United States, like big corporations um, that talk about within 10 years, they expect 50% of their employees to have, have a job overseas. Um, this just shows that this is something that they are looking into this is something that they are, are willing to hire people that have jobs from overseas. And then 59% of employees said they value uh, abroad in a person's career within an organization. Uh, this is just, I, I put this one out there because this just shows when someone does go abroad, uh, how they feel because they went abroad, it helped them get that career. It helped them get what they needed to do or to get that, that job. Um, and so that 59% is pretty good. Uh, that's, that just shows the value that they thought about getting a, a, a degree somewhere else. And then 34% of people who graduated abroad uh, were able to choose their career field. Uh, you will be surprised at how many, even with like American students, how many students graduate and they're not even really sure if they want to, what they graduate in, if they really want to do that degree. Or when they do graduate, they basically choose a career that doesn't necessarily follow their degree. That happens quite a bit. Um, but what also happens is a lot of students remain in school or drop out of school because they, they're just not sure of what to do. Well, what this has found out is when someone does go abroad and gets their degree, that while they were abroad, 34% of the people who did this um, felt like that's when they found their degree. That's when they thought they would actually, so if I'm gonna do engineering, uh, when I went abroad, that was just an idea of doing engineering. But when I went abroad and I started studying that, um, I found out now that I'm really wanting to do electrical engineering or I'm really wanting to do uh, some other type of degree, a business degree or something of that nature. So this is, this basically is just showing as far as your, the power of a, of a, a and like I said, most of this is from the U.S., so a U.S. degree.
All right, so that basically ends us. I do wanna kind of plug in um, my university. Uh, once again, I am Aaron Wilberger. I'm the director of the International Missions Office there. Uh, we are Oklahoma City University. So if you, uh, I know I don't have a map up, but we are located right above Texas, so the state of Oklahoma. And we are uh, basically in the largest city of Oklahoma, which is in Oklahoma City. Uh, and so I would love to share with you more. Uh, if uh, One statistic, because I had a bunch of statistics up here, one statistic that I'd like to throw this out to you uh, is that Oklahoma City has an 87% uh, percent job. That we're able to place you in jobs or internships or even within a graduate program. Uh, so we're at 87% of our students get jobs or an internship. And if you compare that nationally, nationally with universities, universities are at 42%. So we're talking 87 to 42%. So uh, one good thing about our universities, we're, not a, we're able to teach you quite a bit, but we're also to place you in some jobs. And that's kind of the main thing when you're looking at getting a job or when you're looking at getting your degree, is what can it benefit, or how can it benefit? So that is that is me. Take me off share here. Okay. And I will pass it over to Alan. He'll talk to you some more about this. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our section. Um, my name is Alan Long. I'm with the International Admissions Team at Jury University in Springfield, Missouri. Please allow me a second, a few seconds to put on my PowerPoint. Oops. Right. Right. This is me. Um, my team and I are responsible for reviewing your application, your scholarship eligibility, helping you, assisting you to navigate through the admission process. And I'm also one of the um, DSO to help you uh, to issue the I-20 for you to get the student visa to come over to study. Oops, sorry. How do I, excuse me. Sorry, this is, I'm not so familiar with Zoom. Huh, how do I get? I see some uh, Asian names here. So, Dajahao and Ola. All right. Can you guys see my screen? Hey, Aaron, can you see my screen? No, not yet. Okay. Yes? Yeah, now you can do it. Hold on. Hmm. <sighs> Technology. Jeez, <laughs> oh, my apologies. Okay. Now, can you guys you see go. my screen? Yes. Yeah? Great. Good. Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, my team and I are um, uh, responsible for applications, uh, scholarship uh, eligibilities, um, also the I-20. I can, uh, as I can agree more with Aaron just shared in regards to the benefit of studying abroad, it's phenomenal. But while we are, uh, we all agree that the experience of studying abroad is gold, 
we cannot ignore the challenge and the stress on international students facing uh, when they leave home to study in a foreign country. And that is why uh, the com campus life is such a huge deal to us. And I'd like to take over this part to share my thoughts. And th thank you for your time in advance. Obviously, COVID, uh, campus life is different from place to place. Here, I would like to provide a sneak peek at what the campus life is like by portraying the one we have here at Jury University. Hold on. I'd like to start sharing uh, a bit of my personal background as an U.S. immigrant. I'm from China. English is not is English is one of the four language languages I speak. Before I joined the uh, the Jury University, I traveled and worked with ESL students who sought for opportunities to study in the U.S. in the past ten years. I I didn't think I would have met any issues when moving over to the state side. The fact is, I did. I did run into issues. It doesn't matter how well your English is before you come over to the states. There are cultural differences, and that brings unfamiliar challenges. And these challenges bring stress. The stress of feeling isolated. Sometimes. When going to the supermarket for grocery can be a problem. Trying to solve conflicts at your residence hall can be frustrating. And these are um, lifestyle issues and people issues and a lot more we confronted with each day when we are away from home. I understand all of these and the jury community understands this and we don't want and we don't want that to be your experience at jury. We want you to fit in and to enjoy your study in the U.S. at jury university. So leading, uh, we believe that getting involved in campus life is a great way to address issues coming along. Um, at Jury, we have the first year experience program for freshmen, bringing then the smooth transition to the Jury University lifestyle. Leading by the housing department, we have um, living learning community and thematic le uh, living community provide an easier way for our freshmen to transition uh, to Jury University academically and socially. There are more than 100 clubs and organizations in Jury uh, University to keep our students active and connected. It is true that people make place, places different. At Jury, everyone is friendly and ready to help if you need it. In, in and out of your dorm and the classrooms. Also, uh, at Jury, we provided on-campus jobs. Taking jobs on campus is a very good way to plan it. This allows our students to gain some experience and uh, while uh, practicing time management and earning some money. We also have a very big uh, event calendar and events are happening across the campus and all year around. Definitely a great option to get exposed to the new culture and to make lifelong friends. As our vice president of en enrollment, uh, Dr. Kevin Croft often says, it takes a campus to recruit a student to ensure students uh, Success. Our 
Work doesn't stop when a mission process is finished. The support for the uh, from the jury university is throughout your entire time here. We want you to stand out. We want you to stand out and to thrive with us by building support around you. Uh, looking at the screen, you can see we have uh, international support services, the, the campus center, the writing center, tutoring, student success department, and uh, clinic, international student support services, and a lot more. Among so many student and student center services jury offers, I specifically want to draw your attention to our campus center which combines academic advising, uh, career development, and uh, counseling uh, in one place to help you tackle all the difficulties you potentially meet on campus. Besides the uh, differences we found in our lifestyle uh, Back home, there are also differences uh, as an international student needs, face, needs to face in classroom. So our campus center is a place for us to fix that, to help you, uh, help you out. There are so many stories happen in the jury community, and I want to um, share with some share some stories with you. And here I prepare a three minutes uh, video. Please join me to this video. Hope you like it.
Great, I hope you enjoy it. Um, uh, Campus Live is a big part of our stu uh, student life internationally. Um, it's a safe, uh, a safe campus is a safe place for us away from home. Dury is an independent university, church related, grounded in the liberal art tradition and committed to personal, personalized education. We are ranked one of the best university in the Midwest for over 20 years in a row by the US News and the World Report. There are 20 to NC2A sports played on campus. We have students from 54 countries and regions, and there are more than 70 areas of studies for you to choose from. And the 97% of, of our students uh, get a job or uh, went to grad school within six months after their graduation from undergraduate. And here, I, uh, there were so many stories we have seen over the years, and I hope uh, we can see you on campus and you make your story with us here. It's easy to apply with us. Just go to jury.edu slash international apply, and that's free. And learn about scholarship, or just email me at iadmissions at jury.edu, and I, we will help you out from there. Well, thank you for your time. And lastly, um, you can scan the QR code to take a virtual tour on our website. Thank you. Back to you, Aaron. Thanks, Alan. That was uh, informative. That was really good. Uh, <clears throat> I think at this time, um, if you guys have questions, uh, or, and it doesn't necessarily have to relate to benefits or campus life, but if you have questions uh, for us, feel free. And we'll just give you guys a few minutes to do that. So we have a question about uh, what tests am I supposed to take? Um, uh, Alan, you can, you can go first if you want to. And then yeah, I'll, I'll time um, at jury, it's easy. All international students, if you are not uh, participating in the national wide sports team, um, IELTS, TOEFL are pretty standardized uh, tests or even you can take online tests as the Duolingo English test. It's fast and it's more affordable. Yeah, that's the, if we're looking at what English test to take, uh, that's, that's similar to Oklahoma City University. We do allow the TOEFL, uh, you can take the IELTS, uh, and then, uh, the kind of the new one that's being allowed is the Duolingo. And like Alan was saying, it's uh, the Duolingo is is cheaper than the IELTS and the TOEFL, um, but not every university will accept Duolingo. So make sure when you if you do do the Duolingo, make sure the university that you're applying to uh, does does accept it. Um, you uh, for uh, and. The next question, do you have to take all of them? Um, no, uh, and, and I think this is the same also for Alan. Uh, you, you take either one. So you take either the TOEFL or you take the IELTS or you do the Duolingo. Uh, some students may, if they don't get the right test um, or get the right score, sorry, uh, they may want to switch and take a different test, but um, you just are required just to take one of them. We just allow those three uh, tests for admissions. Uh, so question, which one is like, which one is the best to take? Uh, and for, for my opinion, uh, 
Um, it it kind of depends. Um, right now, uh, if I had to rank which ones, I would probably say Duolingo, then the IELTS, and then the TOEFL test. Um, because some the Duolingo, I, I don't know if it's it's easier. Um, the scoring seems to be a little bit easier. Um, but, and there's a speaking part to it. So sometimes students have difficulties with the writing and the, and it, and the sorry, the writing and the reading, um, but are decent at speaking. And so with the Duolingo and in the IELTS, and so the TOEFL also, there's a speaking portion to it. Um, so yeah, I have a little bit about, uh, I have a scholarship, sorry, <laughs> scholarship. Uh, can you guys go uh, through a little bit more about scholarships? Uh, Alan, you can, you can go ahead and then I'll go. Yeah, um, for scholarships, we're starting from $8,000 per year, um, renewable, up to $20,000 a year. And if once you admit it, you can also apply for um, departmental uh, scholarships. They are all stackable. For, I, for IB students, we straight ahead giving $20,000 a year. Yeah, so we have at Oklahoma City University, we've kind of simplified our, our scholarships. What I mean by that is we kind of, we used to require uh, you get multiple test scores like the SAT and the TOEFL, uh, but now we require just based off GPA. So um, we we look at uh, our starting scholarships start at $9,000 and they go all the way up to $13,000. Uh, and so there's also uh, scholarships within the departments um, that they're, that, that students can get into. And then there are, uh, upon, while you're at the university, there are scholarships that you can get if they, if you have financial difficulties or academic, um, you know, you enhance your academics and your grades, there are scholarships for those too. Uh, we have a question about uh, SAT. Um, I'm assuming, is it required uh, to get into the university, and if it is, or are scholarships uh, associated with SAT? And Alan, you go ahead. Sorry, I didn't catch you. Can you run up by me again? I sorry, I got so interrupted there, here. <laughs> no, no worries. So, so there's a question about SAT, and I. Uh -huh. I it, it just says NSAT, so I'm assuming, is it an option? Do you have to take it? What are the scores? Oh, um, um, like SAT is not um, the only uh, accepted uh, test here uh, at Jury, um, but we do want our students to take SAT if the student is, uh, is to play sports on campus and accepting the athletic scholarship. And that is similar to us at Oklahoma City University is we don't require an SAT to enter the university. So it, it's not a requirement. So if, if you've never taken it, uh, you can still apply and you can still get admitted into the university. And so that, that's with, with us. Let me see. If I took the Cambridge exam, oh, just move on. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. So where, uh, I lost it. I'm assuming if you take the Cambridge, do we accept Cambridge exam for entry? I'm assuming I'll have to find it. So uh, Aaron, I will take it. Uh, I will answer this question first. Um, okay, sure. We love, I mean, Cambridge uh, curriculum is very robust, but uh, we love uh, to see students challenging themselves in that uh, system. Uh, but currently, uh, Cambridge uh, exams is not one of the affected uh, tests we, we uh, have here at Jury University. Still need an IELTS, TOEFL, or the Duolingo English test. 
And, and that's similar to us too. So uh, we do accept Cambridge when you're looking at students that might be, that might be doing the, the IB, mm -hmm. uh, that may be doing ordinary levels to advanced levels, all within that Cambridge style system. Uh, we, we still re would require uh, looking at a TOEFL or an IELTS or an English proficiency test. Uh, but one of the benefits of you doing the Cambridge, at least with our university, uh, especially if you did your A-levels, uh, your advanced levels, we can use that as far as transfer credits. So you could actually come into the university not as a beginning freshman, but you would actually have some transfer credits. Uh, and so that, that could be a benefit um, of having your Cambridge A-level. Yes, the same here at your university. Um, we talk about, um, there's a question about IB students. Is there any score requirements for IB? Not uh, at your university. We don't. We don't. Uh, uh, we don't see that uh, the IB score. We don't require to see an IB score. We just want to see the IB certificate. Uh, what you are. What you are doing. Uh, at that program. Mm -hmm. um, we are a little bit different with this. Uh, we, do, we do accept IB first off. Uh, and, and we also, uh, I'm trying to get it here. Okay, anyways, oh, let's go. I was trying to pull it up so I can get it exactly. So uh, we do accept IB, uh, and, and we look at kind of uh, your scores, as, uh, and I'd have to go through. We would look at the scores, but we would also look at it for transfer credits too. So you would have the possibility, if you were to do your IB, um, that you could get uh, some transfer credits for your IB. And if you actually got your IB diploma, you would get, uh, as far as I'm aware of, you'd get about 30 credits transferred into the university. So there are some, there are some great benefits um, if you're to take your IB test. And we could, so we do have some capabilities when students do the IB, as far as waiving uh, the English proficiency test, but of course that would be dependent upon what you and what you scored uh, in that English portion of the IB part. Uh, let's see. So we do have a question as far as do you think it's harder for Central American students to get in? Um, Alan, you can go ahead. This will be a quickie for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, we saw uh, some travel bans uh, in the previous month. We, uh, as we have, we're having an election coming up in November. Uh, we don't know for sure for spring 2021 or fall 2021 yet, but. Um, uh, I think it's not a huge problem as, as long as we can fulfill the I-20 requirements. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Yeah, Sandra. So, uh, Alejandra. Yeah. Alejandra. I hope that made, yeah, I hope that, that makes sense to you. So the U.S. USCIS and ICE um, presented a set of uh, requirements for our, uh, for our international students to get across the border into the US to study. As long as uh, you're, you are meeting the requirement and satisfy the I-20 uh, requirements, I, I, I think it shouldn't be a huge deal, a huge problem. 
Yeah, and, and and we've, I mean, we've had several students that have arrived uh, that that came in for this coming semester for so we what we call our spring semester. Uh, sorry, for our fall semester that came in in August, uh, expecting and these are a few athletes that came in uh, and then uh, they. They shut the program down due to the COVID situation, COVID-19 virus. Uh, and so they went online and then the students returned back home. So, but we didn't, we interacted with these students to find out if there was any difficulty. They didn't really have difficulty coming in. Uh, kind of like as Alan was saying, as long as your I-20 and your immigration documents are, are valid and, and are intact, uh, you, you should be able to enter in. Um, with that said, uh, as far as I'm aware, U.S. embassies, and I, we can only, Alan and I can really only speak for the United States, uh, but U.S. embassies ha are starting to reopen. If not, they have already reopened. Um, so I, I would imagine there would probably be a, a backlog or a line to get into the embassies. So I, I would, if you're thinking of trying to apply for the upcoming fall, uh, which will start in August, or, or at least in our case, uh, or start in January, which is our spring intake, I would try to apply as soon as possible and try to get all your documents in order uh, so that you have plenty of time uh, to go to the U.S. embassies. Agreed. So um, we ha also have a question from Melanie. Mm. To maintain the scholarship, what would be the minimum average, Aaron? Okay, so um, for us, it's it's pretty simple. So for you to get a scholarship, uh, you get your 3.0 GPA, uh, and that's to enter to get the scholarship uh, as you're coming in. Uh, when and you get this scholarship throughout your whole time you study. So uh, it's not like you just get it maybe one semester or one year. You'll get this through your whole. So every semester you'll get you'll get a piece of scholarship, uh, and you basically need to maintain either a, a, I think it's a two point seven five GPA to maintain that. Uh, there are some scholarships that are about three point uh, but typically, so if you're getting a three point GPA, uh, you have nothing to worry about. Uh, two seven five, you can also maintain your scholarship. So at Jury University, once you are eligible for the scholarship amount, um, it will be automatically renewed annually. You don't have to worry about that. It will be throughout your four years or five years with us. I think that's the questions we have. You're welcome, Melani. Uh oh, so Julio, for for us, uh, we'll kind of repeat what we were talking about with scholarship maintain. Uh, Julio for for Oklahoma City University, uh, like very similar like Alan's. Uh, once you receive that particular scholarship, it's an automatic renewal. And what we mean by that is is you will get that throughout your whole every semester. You'll get some of that scholarship money uh, every semester that you're there. Uh, for us to maintain that scholarship is based off the GPA. Uh, and that GPA is 2.75. Uh, there are some schol scholarships as 3.0 GPA, but as long as you're kind of maintaining a 2.75, you can have that scholarship.
So somebody asked, um, do you guys accept Kate? Hmm. Do we accept what? Which one? Cape, C A P E. I think that. Um, oh, like a cap that, yeah. test? Yeah. I, I believe so, yes. Uh, I'm not 100% on that one, but uh, we do allow, we, do allow students to, uh, I, I know, I know this actually, yeah. We do allow it. Uh, so students can come to the university, take a CAP test, uh, mm -hmm. and, and basically pass over, over that, uh, or what am I trying to think of? Get waived of that class. Um, I do, um, what careers do, uh, Dury offer? So Dury University offer. What's the question? Sorry. So it says, uh, what, what career? Oh, yeah. 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 That's it. Um, for students go to, uh, went to a professional, uh, path, uh, they, they, uh, for now, they practice law, criminal, criminalology, and uh, nursing, um, teaching, uh, advertising, uh, graphical, graphical storytelling, um, com uh, software, so software engineer, engineers, and um, we. There's so much, so many more areas, but I do. Not we majority uh, business marketing uh, management and architects are uh, the pop uh, architectures are the popular uh, programs for students go and then when they graduate ninety seven of them uh, can get a job within six months. Yeah, I think. Uh, uh, at Oklahoma City Universities, you know, we have uh, 70 undergraduate programs and 20 plus grad with a few doctoral programs. Uh, and, and they could vary, uh, you know, anywhere from the sciences to uh, humanities to even fine arts or uh, music, theater, stuff like that. So uh, one of our newer programs that seems to be popular um, are uh, game animation and design. So if you're interested in, in designing video games or designing apps, which is quite, it's been quite popular as far as being in hire. We've had several of our students that have been hired right away. We've even had some of our students that before they even graduated uh, got basically hired or wanted to get hired. So they had a job immediately right after they graduated. So uh, it's, a, it's an interesting field. Yeah. Uh, there is a, uh, a question, do you offer complete scholarships for athletes? Actually, yes, 100%. We, we over the years, I've seen uh, many athletes earn 100% coverage. Um, but to earn that, we need to connect you to our coaches. If that makes, uh, makes sense to you. That is similar to us too. Uh, we do offer up to 100% of a student could, if they're an athlete, they could get offered. It, it could vary though. Um, it's not just because you got on, just because you got on the team doesn't necessarily mean that you'll get a 100% scholarship. They could vary, but the possibility is there uh, for students to get scholarship uh, through an athletic. And like Alan was saying, it's it's all dependent upon whether uh, you get on the team, which requires you to you know speak with the coach. Uh, there is a question, how do we apply? 
uh, with with us, it's it's, and I think Alan talked about too. With at least with Oklahoma City University, uh, you do it online, uh, so uh, that can and I can type in uh, my information so that if so that you can do it online and even your documents. So that it's an online application in which you will apply and you can upload your documents. Yes. The same here at Jury University, quite simple and it's free. I'll just send a link. I think I go through all the question, uh, existing questions. So while waiting for new questions, I also wanted to add, uh, to add that uh, at Jury University, we have, um, we have two gyms and two, uh, one on campus uh, clinic. In international student insurance is it required? Was that a question or you're saying? Oh, no, it's required. Sorry, okay. it's not a question. That's <laughs> <laughs> just a reminder because um, last year uh, we have students coming in like, oh, I um, uh, have questions about the, um, the international questions. But it is required, but it also can be waived if you have your own insurance from your home country. Yeah, that's that's similar to us too. And, and you're going to find out when you start to apply to other universities. Um, within the United States, some states have different laws or policies for for schools to follow. Um, but most states will require uh, international students to have health insurance. And it's not only international students, but also American students, too, to have health insurance. Uh, and so uh, many times internationals don't, aren't, don't necessarily have availability to bring their insurance that they may have from home or have insurance home. Uh, and so we offer that to them and it is a requirement. Do you think tuition would be manageable coming from Canada? Aaron. Um, I would assume so. I think, I think tuition can be manageable anywhere. Um, obviously scholarships help a lot. Uh, it can reduce your, your tuition down. Um, and so, uh, there's, there's different ways in which you can manage uh, your manage your budget, I would say. Uh, yeah. Oklahoma City University, uh, hopefully scholarships can be applied that can reduce your tuition. Uh, we do allow at the undergraduate and graduate level for students to do lab work or do research or, or do um, work within departments. Uh, and you, you can do job on campus, which can help reduce your everyday needs. It may not be able to completely pay for everything, uh, but at least it can help with your everyday type needs. So that there are multiple ways in which you can, if, if you do it right, you can kind of work your way in uh, to reduce, you know, the cost of studying abroad. Right.
Well, I'm going to, in the chat, I'm going to leave my name and email. Uh, and you're more than welcome if you have other questions or, or something, because something always tends to come up. If, or if you just want to check out uh, Oklahoma City University, I will, um, you're more than welcome to contact me. I can provide you information. Uh, Great idea. I will do the same too. in the in the chat the zoom chat box thing I hope our um, our presentations bring some in, uh, in you uh, valuable information to you guys today. Yes, I, I, I applaud, or I'm so thankful that you guys are looking into studying abroad. Uh, hopefully you will um, make that decision to go to abroad, to go abroad, because like I said, it is, is life changing. Uh, and it, it does, the degree that you get, at least within the United States, the value of that degree from the United States, uh, can help succeed in getting jobs uh, worldwide. So um, we do hope that you'll, uh, like I said, we're a little biased to the United States, um, but we hope that you will uh, look in to coming. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank yeah, you for your time. I think that ends the session.